Welcome to the Own It Powercast, the place to be when you get serious about making big changes and accelerating growth in your life and in your relationships. Finally create the life you've always wanted, living life on your own terms. Learn how to take your fear and turn it into powerful choices that will create sustained change. Now your host, Mary Baker. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Own It Powercast, the place to come to get what you need to move yourself forward. Hey, it's Mary Baker and welcome to episode 197. Building confidence means owning our behavior. Welcome back to our month, which has been all about the key to self-confidence, and that's personal responsibility. Last week, we focused on how owning our needs and getting them met in healthy ways. And before that, we talked about not acting out our feelings, but expressing them vulnerably and openly and honestly. Well, today I want to talk about the other leg to that stool and how we can either act out or own our feelings and needs, and that is by our behavior. Because this is how it all gets played out anyway. What we do when we're upset, when we screwed up or hit with something very hard to deal with, when we're confronted, when we essentially can't deal. How we behave is everything. Because when we don't take responsibility for our behavior, we can act out in a variety of ways. And these behaviors can be so harmful to us and those around us, of course and I think can create a cycle of blame and defensiveness that really makes it difficult to move forward in our life and grow and be the person we want to be. Okay, so first we're going to look at unhealthy behavior and get a sense of the impacts of all of that, and then we're going to talk about what do you do instead. Okay, so the first one, probably one of the more obvious ones, is blaming. Blaming others. You know, it's one of the most common ways we can act out when we don't take ownership for our behavior. We might blame our parents, our boss, our partner, or anyone else we can think of for the problems we're facing. By blaming others, we avoid looking at our own actions and take responsibility for our role, our part in the situation, even if what others are doing is really awful, we still have choices that we have made and choices that we can make. We still have ways that we either cope in healthy ways or not. The next one is making excuses. You know, it's another way we can act out when we don't own our behavior. We might say things like, well, I was really tired or I didn't have enough time to explain why we didn't do something we were supposed to do. By making excuses, we get to avoid taking responsibility for our actions and the consequences that come with us. I want to stop here a moment. We've talked about this on the show in terms of internal boundaries or self-discipline. So when someone says, I was tired or I didn't have enough time, well, then someone didn't plan or someone didn't take responsibility to make sure that they could get those things done that they promised. So it's really about personal ownership and self-discipline here. When we don't do that, we end up with excuses. What else are you going to do? And sometimes we can outright deny. Sometimes we can deny that we did anything wrong. We might say things like, I didn't do that, or that wasn't my fault, even when it's really clear that we were involved in the situation. Because by denying responsibility, we avoid facing the consequences of our actions and may cause further harm to those around us. This is a big deal. You will blow trust in a relationship if you deny responsibility. You're not believable. And so why do people do this? Well, they they can't handle the overwhelming shame that takes over them. And this usually comes from early experiences where they were shamed or belittled or hurt physically humiliated, embarrassed, all that stuff. And so they can't handle admitting making a mistake or doing anything wrong. So usually it's not because people are sociopaths. It's because, I mean, they have those folks too, but it's because they're afraid to admit it because how awful it went back in the day when they got caught doing something wrong or they screwed up. So deflecting is another one, which is just more defensiveness. Deflecting is when we redirect the blame onto someone else or a different issue altogether. For example, if someone confronts you about 
something you did, you might deflect the conversation by bringing up something that they did wrong in the past. By deflecting, you avoid taking responsibility for your actions. And boy, are you going to cause a lot more conflict and tension. You're just going to escalate the argument and nothing gets resolved. Now, the rule of thumb is stay with what they're telling you. Use empathy, right? Instead of moving on to, yeah, but look what you did. Because it really just invalidates the hell out of the other person. Okay, next one is justifying. Similar to making excuses, justifying is when we try to justify our behavior by saying things like, well, I had no other choice or I did what I had to do. By justifying our behavior, again, we avoid taking responsibility for the consequences of our actions. And we might even believe that our actions were justified when they really weren't. When people are getting healthier, they they have a hard time, you know, walking through this like, Mary, am I, am I justifying things or do I have a real reason? So the next one, gaslighting and other nasty behaviors that we've talked about recently on the show. Gaslighting is a form of psychological manipulation when someone makes you question your sanity, your memory, your perception, or your reality. Now, here's the thing. It's like carbon monoxide. It can be really difficult to identify it because it's often done so subtly and gradually, and you might not even realize what is happening. So there's a few different ways that gaslighting can happen. I'm going to go through these. So obvious denial of reality. They say things like, well, I never said that. Or, you're making that up or you're crazy. They'll do contradiction. They might tell someone what they remember is incorrect and that their perception is flawed. They'll say, that's not what happened, or you're remembering it all wrong. Then they'll blame. You must have misunderstood, or you're just overreacting. They'll minimize. They'll downplay your feelings and experiences, making you feel like your concerns are insignificant or irrational. You're being too sensitive. It's not that big of a deal. Stop overreacting. And then finally, twisting. They're going to twist your words or actions to make them seem crazy or unstable. They might say things like, you're always so paranoid or you're making something out of nothing after you bring up a real issue. It's a real manipulative, nasty tactic that aims to make you question your reality and your sense of self. And it's very, very damaging. Okay. Another nasty one in a different way is people pleasing. Now, It can be considered a form of acting out behavior because it really involves prioritizing the needs and desires of others over your own, and it's emotionally dishonest because it's often at the expense of your well-being. When we get into that people-pleasing, we're usually seeking approval, validation, or love, acceptance, rather than owning our own behavior and making choices that are in alignment with our own values and needs. And it can really lead to a cycle of behavior where we constantly seek external validation and approval. So people ask me, why am I so moody all the time? Well, because if everyone else is not nice to you today or doesn't think you're fabulous today, you're going to have a shit day. How could you not? People pleasing, we also avoid conflict or difficult conversations. We're going to neglect our needs. We're not being authentic. And so we're acting out, right? We're not taking ownership of what's really going on for us. All right, so those are some examples. By no means is that the whole list, but they're examples of unhealthy behavior, okay? After working with relationships for a long time, I can tell you, boy, if you're doing any of that stuff or if they're doing any of that stuff to you, we're gonna have big problems in the relationship. You're gonna have a big disconnect, You're not going to have emotional trust. You may not even have functional trust. Like they can't even call you out on, you know, being irresponsible last week or not partnering or things like that. So what does owning our behavior look like? And what does it require? I use the word require because you can't just go out and fake it. You can't just do it. There are certain things that we have to work on, certain pieces, I think to move towards being more authentic and more ownership. If you saw yourself in some of the previous examples, don't beat yourself up. Know that there is a road to healthy. You just have to work on some things, little by little, gradually over time. 
The big one is honesty. And there are two ways of being honest with ourselves here, and both are important. One is utmost honesty, and the other one I call own your agenda. Emotional honesty or utmost honesty is like we talked about this month on the show. It's where you dig down and you figure out what vulnerable feelings are happening, such as fear, shame, guilt, deep wishes for connection and love. So identifying those and then finding ways to try to express them instead of behaving in passive aggressive ways that we just talked about. And you're not going to do it in the moment. You're probably going to go back later. You're probably going to do it in a note or a text to start with, and that's okay. But after you've walked away and you've calmed down and you got centered and your conscience gets the best of you and you want to clean it up, you go back and say, I am so sorry. I think I was just so freaked out that I had let you down. I disappointed you. I screwed up. I'm so mad at myself and I don't know what to do. Okay. Utmost honesty is a big deal. The next one is own your agenda. Like my friend said many years ago, before you open your mouth, before you walk in that door, what are you really, really trying to do? And this can be really hard to swallow sometimes because it feels so manipulative because it is. But are you hoping secretly that you tell that story, they'll feel sorry for you? Maybe you couch it in such a way so that they'll rescue you from whatever self-created problem you have. Yes, self-created oftentimes. Or maybe, and don't we all want this, join with you in thinking that these other people are terrible and it's their fault and how could they? And that somehow you are so without fault here. (laughs) Maybe you're trying to impress or feel accepted. Maybe you're trying to convince someone of your truth. Oh, this list is so endless, but just start noticing how clean you are and showing up. What is your agenda? What do you leave out of conversations? What do you try to embellish? What do you try to give them the impression of? Be very, very careful. The other thing we can do is we can compartmentalize. We can tell some people some stuff, but other people other stuff. Because we know if we tell that one friend the real truth, um, they're going to let us have it in a loving way, right? They may not let us off the hook, but maybe the other person would enable us more. So really want to be clean about what is our agenda here. Now, the opposite of having an agenda, obviously, is just being authentic and letting the chips fall, being yourself. Another big one is humility. Being humble and willing to look at your behavior means acknowledging that you're not perfect and you don't have to be, And being open to examining your actions and behaviors with an objective, neutral, non-judgmental perspective. It means recognizing that you're capable of making mistakes and it's okay. And that you don't have to have all the answers. And that you can be teachable and you can learn and you can grow and you can get better. So humility means I can be imperfect and I can learn and grow. And I could admit when I don't know something when I don't understand something, and admit where I struggle. When we're humble and willing to look at our behavior, we are open to feedback and loving, constructive criticism from others. We don't see criticism anymore as an attack on our character, but rather as an opportunity to learn and grow. Even if it hurts like hell to hear it, The next day, you're like, yeah, but I'm so glad she told me that because, my God, I didn't realize I was acting that way. We're open to different perspectives and ideas as well, and we're willing to admit when we're wrong. So we become the person who is a good person who can also be wrong. That's the opposite of all the defensive behaviors at the beginning of the show. That all smacks of low self-esteem. I can't admit I'm wrong because then I must be an awful person. That's why this work is so important, because as you heal you, then you can look at your stuff and take ownership. Because being humble and willing to look at our behavior is such an important aspect of personal growth. I just think it helps us become more self-aware, own our actions, and I think develop more authentic and better relationships with others. Okay, so how do we take this responsibility in action? Here's the thing. Own your part regardless of what happened. 
Number one, communicate openly and honestly. Being able to communicate openly and honestly with other people is a cornerstone of a healthy relationship. We all know this. This means using an I statement and try to express your feelings and needs and boundaries in a way that's respectful of them and non judgmental. You don't have to shame the crap out of them to tell them that they hurt your feelings. You keep it about you. Respecting autonomy is another one and practicing detachment. In a healthy relationship, both people should be respecting each other's autonomy and therefore the right to make their own choices. This means not trying to control or manipulate each other and allowing each other to have their own interests, their own friendships, their own ideas, their own values, their own screw-ups, their own struggles. Next, being trustworthy and reliable. You know, your words match your actions. You're congruent and consistent as you can be. No one's perfect. Here's the thing. Trust is foundational for any relationship. This means trusting that you're honest, that you're reliable, and you have people's best interests at heart. That means being honest with yourself first, then with them. Next, being supportive. You know, our connections are ones that we're supposed to support each other's goals and aspirations and dreams. This means being able to provide emotional support when needed and not just being so wrapped in our own stuff. It means being able to celebrate other people's achievements. That can entail a lot of work on our self-esteem if that's difficult. And if it is difficult, you're just not happy with where you are. Okay, so the funny thing is as we become better at where we are, more self-love, more personal responsibility, making changes in our life, we can more authentically cheer other people on. Okay, here's a big one. Practicing empathy and compassion. Being able to see things from their perspective and trying to show empathy and compassion, especially when they're going through a difficult time, is such an important part of any relationship. Here's the thing. Empathy work begins within you. With doing some compassion and maybe grief work around your own experiences first. It's an inside-out job. Next, being able to resolve conflicts respectfully without acting out. I mean, come on, they're going to arise in every relationship that we have. But in a healthy relationship, we should be able to resolve conflicts respectfully. And that means no defensiveness, name-calling, insults. No emotional immaturity. This means you've done enough self-esteem work that you can hear how you may be hurting someone and that's okay. Or maybe you dropped the ball at work. Or maybe you've been wrapped in something like yourself lately and you've kind of neglected other people's needs. That can happen. Finally, but not least, honoring boundaries. You know, we need to have our own boundaries, right? What we're willing to do, put up with, deal with, and what we're not as well as being respectful of other people's boundaries and not push the other person to do something they're not comfortable with. And this means even with repeating your request several times, maybe whining or joking or guilting them, trying to wear them down. That's not cool. If they told you once, firmly, no, respect it. Don't try to talk them out of their no because you can't handle it. That sounds harsh, but that's what we're doing. It's like, we're so afraid if they say no. And sometimes there are very good reasons why we're upset. But we don't manipulate them out of their no. We go walk away and do some grief work. Remember, detached. Just because you doesn't mean they. Because overall, healthy behavior in relationships means self-love first, mutual respect, trust, support, and a willingness to communicate openly and honestly. So today we talked about what I think is such an important part of self-confidence, and that is owning our behavior, regardless of how we feel or what others might be saying or doing. Our behavior is so interconnected with our communication. So we looked at some pretty unhealthy ways we can act, which is really being emotionally immature from deflecting responsibility by being defensive, making excuses, 
people-pleasing, and the nasty gaslighting and manipulation. Being an emotionally safe, trustworthy, and honest human, I think is the best way to not only feel better about ourselves, but to have healthier, loving connections with others. Thank you so much for being here today. I hope you grab some things that you can work on this month so you can feel better about how you behave. If you don't already get the newsletter, make sure you sign up at ownitpowercast.com. And I really appreciate each and every one of you. This podcast is for you. So pay it forward, keep focusing on you, and I'll see you next time. We hope you took away some useful insights and tools you can begin using right away. If you did, please leave a positive review and share on your social media. Because could you imagine if everyone in your life really got it together? Remember, own it now, so you can really own it later.